Hello and welcome to my morning note. The Fed has a dilemma. Uh, as anybody who's been following the US political campaign will know, unemployment is not improving in anything like the rate that had been hoped. And that's causing a lot of political heat. Meanwhile, it's not clear that there is an obvious deflationary scare of the kind that made it very easy for the Fed to resort to uh, quantitative easing to exceptional monetary policies back in the aftermath of the Lehman Brothers collapse. So what exactly can the Fed do about this situation, particularly given that any move they take at the moment will be seen as being very political in the run-up to a very contentious uh, presidential election? Well, President, uh, the uh, chairman of the Fed, Ben Bernanke, uh, gave Humphrey Hawkins' testimony to Congress this week. That gave a lot of insight into his thinking. And I'd like to discuss that now with our guest. He's one of Britain's best-known economists, currently the chairman of Fulcrum Asset Management, Gavin Davies. Gavin, thanks very much for being here today. Let's start by taking a look at the uh, uh, unemployment picture mm -hmm. from initial claims. Unlike some central banks, the Fed does have a remit for dealing with uh, unemployment. Does this look as though this might be creating some kind of a license for further monetary policy action, do you think? Possibly, I think, is the answer to that, John. I mean, Bernanke has said now on lots of occasions mm. in his press conference, also in the Humphrey Hawkins, that if unemployment stalls, stops falling right. in a decent manner, then he thinks that will be sufficient grounds for further easing. What you can see from this, the initial claims for jobless benefits each week, is they've started to tick up slightly. Yes. And actually that's been consistent with employment slowing down a lot and unemployment stalling. So why the Fed is still waiting, I'm not sure. Okay, so the, yeah, and, and obviously this is politically as salient a measure as it gets. This is yeah, viewed although, very, very carefully. You know, what Ben Bernanke says is he's not acting in a political way, and I believe him. He's got the political campaign making noise in both directions around him, and that's mm. complicating his job. But this and the inflation rate actually combined means the, Fe the Fed should be doing more, I think. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, perhaps uh, arguably the key measure in some people's eyes as to, as to what the Fed is trying to achieve, which is uh, what we're looking at here is two separate measures of core uh, inflation, stripping out obviously the very volatile commodity prices. Does this give license for exceptional, uh, exceptional measures? Well, it's less clear, mm. but I think it is beginning to give Mr. Bernanke some room as well. He does look at these numbers. He's definitely a core inflation man. And what we can see is the 2% target that they have for PCE, they don't have it actually for core PCE, right. um, was exceeded here in the core numbers for quite a long period during the winter. And if you remember, right. Ben Bernanke became much more equivocal about easing somewhere right. around February, March because of these numbers. But in the right. recent past, I would say the trend here has started to drop. And um, we're clearly now seeing numbers that are coming below the Fed's 2% right. mandate or 2% objective. So they're missing on the low side for inflation. They're missing unemployment as well. They have done something at the last FOMC meeting, yes. but I think there's a case for more now. OK, let's take a look at one final very critical variable that they, they look at. These are inflation break-evens, inflation expectations as derived from the uh, Treasury's market. Obviously, if there was ever a case for, for QE, it was uh, in the immediate mm. aftermath of Lehman. Again, does this, has this yet reached the point where you really think they have um, action to move? No, nice I, don't think, move. I don't think that these inflation expectations at 2% force them to take action like mm. here, which was Operation Twist, mm. and here, which was QE2. So right. we're not quite in that territory. Um, but I do think, again, it gives permission Mm. to the FOMC to move. And that, I think, is, is, is the key thing, given that unemployment has stopped falling. OK, and your best guess, one very quick final question, do you think we actually get more QE at the very next meeting? Well, I think we'll get more action. Whether mm. it is an increase in the balance sheet, I'm not sure. I think maybe more guidance about short rates, saying they will not rise until 2015, in the middle of 2015, is the most likely thing. Thank you very much indeed. That's certainly a very interesting uh, possibility for, for Ben Lanky to explore. Perhaps he should listen to Gavin Davies.